Good day. You know, welcome to the Tech Central podcast brought to you by Co-Miner. My name is Ngetis Maegi, so I'm the Tech Central moderator for the session. Rick, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Excellent. Rick, so, you know, I believe that you have a bit of history with South Africa. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, I actually, I used to work for a small credit card company called Capital One, which had a facility, I actually bought a company called Nedcor in South Africa. But during that time, I was involved with BPOs in South Africa. So we did some of our call center work through BPOs in South Africa. And obviously, it came to your lovely country quite a few times to work with those suppliers. Then over time, I formed a very strong relationship with one of them and came down and actually was the managing director of that call center for several years and lived in Cape Town. And I do miss it quite a bit. It's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful country. I just don't get back as much as I want. It's a long way from the United States to get there. So I suppose your next trip is down here then. I'm actually in Cape Town at the moment. I flew in this morning as well. Excellent. So Rick, I mean, it's so awesome to have you. Uh, you know, I've been in technology, you know, 20, 25 years, but I get very excited just talking about, you know, these new and exciting technologies. So Core Miner, so maybe just give me a brief summary of Core Miner and kind of your role in the business, some of the exciting things you've done. Let me give you less than 60 seconds of what this company does so we can yeah. talk about AI and fun stuff. Right. I work for an interaction analytics company. So if you think about it from this perspective, there are conversations everybody has with a company that they do business with for whatever it is. Let's just pick an airline. They're so easy to pick on. You need to contact an airline for whatever reason. Maybe it's through your app and it's a chat. Maybe it's a phone call, but whatever it is, you got to change a flight or maybe you want to book a flight or whatever's going on in your world. And so we take those interactions and we turn them into data. And in doing so, you use artificial intelligence to take conversations and transcribe yeah. them into a document, or we take maybe a chat or a tweet or a survey or some kind of interaction, that any kind of interaction a human being has with that brand, turn it into data. Once we turn it into data, then our software goes to work. And that software uses machine learning to go in and make sense of that interaction in a way that it can add more data to that call. If you were to read a call like a play, customer says hello, agent says hello, right? You work your way through this interaction. We can begin to append it and say, well, that's an opening and this is where they got money and this is where, and so we can begin to add all that data to it. When you do that, you can look at all the interactions in macro, everything that happened and say, hey, what are the trends across my organization? Why are people calling me? What are my longest calls? Or maybe what are the areas that my airline just, just people are upset with? Well, they don't like the movies. How would you know that, right? Agents just pass over that. It also allows you to look at every individual interaction. And this is where it's really fun. So you can go and take an interaction and say, this particular one has a thing in it. Whatever that thing is, a good thing. Oh, this is the best agent in the world. Everyone loves this person. This is who we love it. Or it's the worst thing. This customer is pretty much never going to fly on our little airline again. They're not happy with us. So that's what our software does. And then it allows you to take those and turn them into insights. So that means your business can take action on them. You can say, hey, I want these. We have a coaching platform. Agents, please go do something better. We have a, a visualizing platform. So here's the data in aggregate. Show it to the CEO. They're really going to care about this. And also we have the ability to do it in real time. So as we're talking right now, it's coming in and saying, Rick, stop talking about movies. Tell the, tell the customer that they're whatever it is, or whatever you want on there. But that, that's what we do. And I get to play around the artificial intelligence side of it, the side that makes the software smarter. Brilliant. Rick, that's good background, I think, for our discussion today. It's just a good context to always have. Sure. To have background. I mean, obviously, you know, the focus of today's discussion is just to kind of demystify, you know, the role of AI and this technology you know, I'd like to understand a bit more about, you know, benefits to customer. I mean, some of the stuff that I've read or, you know, I've heard before does sound like uh, science fiction. So just maybe dive into it, Rick, and just tell us the AI inside of core miner technology is supposed to give you sort of real-time impressions of people's thoughts or insights. Maybe tell us a little bit about that. How does sure. all this work? Yeah, you know, I like AI as science fiction because there is a place where AI is science nonfiction. And then there's a line where it becomes science fiction. And then that's marketers don't tend to pay attention to that line. That yeah. line is inconvenient when you're selling AI, right? You want it to be science fiction because that sells better than science nonfiction. Sadly, AI, those of you that work in it or machine learning, it's boring at its core because it takes away the boring part of being a human. We use artificial intelligence at its base to go through, we call it like sort of the heavy lift. So 80% of the work 
can be removed by a machine. And that's the science nonfiction part. That's having machines going in and identifying an entity and saying, hey, a customer name was said or an address was said. I could have a human being go through a transcript and so check off customer name and check off address, but that would be so boring for a human to do. They wouldn't want to do it. And so costly, right? A machine can do it in milliseconds. You can just do that. That's so a particular algorithm. Or maybe you want to identify something more complicated, like the context. So why do people call? We have a trained model that goes in and identifies the reasons people call. It's a transformer model. It's very advanced. And it goes in and it, and it uses the context, not the words. So this is where they're talking about the reason they called. All of these things, all they're doing is just adding more features or more data to these transcripts. But it takes away the boring human job of doing it. So that's the science and nonfiction part. Now we start to step into what do you do with it? When you start to get to that side, and you say that's where everybody gets dazzled. When you see the output of AI, when you see it actually begin to start working, you're like, oh my gosh, how does it do that, right? So these are places like, are they angry? Is there sentiment here, right? That's when you start to go, how did it know that, yeah. right? Or, and so it, that, it's using that, all that exactly, boring. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly the piece, uh, you know, that I really, I mean, I was like, really sentiment, intent, can, you know, can really technology sort of interpret yeah. that? Um, it can to a certain percentage, sure. So sentiment's such an odd one. There's two ways to do it. There's the old way and the new way. The old way is you use a dictionary. And you just say, here's all the negative words in my dictionary that matter to me. And here's all the positive words in my dictionary that matter to me. And then you watch the words go by. And you say, there's a negative word. There's a negative word. There's a negative word. That's plus three or minus three. That's a minus three sentence. Oh my goodness. That's so negative. Minus three. There's a positive word. There's a positive word. That's a plus two sentence, right? Pretty boring and pretty simple, but it can do that. The new models that we have, they're based on using the context in which it was said. It no longer takes the word dictionary into account. It says, this is a negative sentimented statement. It does that by literally just assigning math or numbers to these words, and it begins to average and add them up. And so as you begin to generate these things, you get a probability number. So this is a probability of being a low sentiment portion of an interaction, right? And so when you have negativity, that's like you go to Amazon or you go to buy something on a website and they say, give us a review. You got one star to five stars. That's all sentiment is. It's how you feel about something. It's a one star, five star review, one star, negative five star. I love this thing. And so that's what we're doing with sentiment. Pretty simple. When we step over into emotion, now we're going a different way. Emotion adds a different axis. So we've got this one to five plus to minus axis down here. And we've got this other one that is intensity. So if I said to you, you're giving me a one star and you're yelling at me, you could probably go, that sounds like anger. That sounds yeah. a lot like anger there. Or you're giving me a five star and you've raised your voice really loud. Well, that sounds like you maybe joy. Maybe you're elated. Like, I love this product, right? You're really, really happy about it. And so that particular access is what you're looking to predict with your machine learning. The machine wouldn't know it's angry. It would have no idea. It would just say high intensity, low sentiment. And then human beings go in and go, we're calling that anger today. That is anger. That's not only this area. I want that. But and you see, this is where it gets hard. You might listen yeah. to that with your childhood and say, that's not anger, that's frustration. When people are angry, they're angry. You know, like, no, no, that's anger, right? Or with a brand, we have some brands, some companies we work with that are very touchy. If yeah. their customers are mildly unhappy, they melt down, right? They're like, we've got to change the world. No one can be mildly unhappy with my product. And there's other companies like debt collectors. You can't yeah. get above zero. <laughs> they just don't have it in their calls. Like no one's really happy. Gee, I'm yeah. so happy. So that's where the machine learning comes in. And it begins to point out areas and put these clusters together. And then we humans label them and then they become emotion. And so yeah. it's a combination of sort of that intensity and the sentiment of those words. And so once again, science nonfiction, not as yeah. fun as like, and the machine magically knows, right? It just doesn't sure. have that ability. Sure, Rick. I mean, look, what's comforting as soon as you talk about machine learning and AI and all these fancy technologies, you know, I get worried, you know, are these machines going to replace humans? It's great to know that humans still have a role to play somehow, right? In interpreting. Do, yeah. Yeah. In interpreting all, you know, all the sentiment. Now, most companies, whether that's in banking or telco or, you know, in the call center environment, they will have some sort of call center technology yeah. one way or the so, you know, how is this, the call miner offering different to that? Is it complementary? Is it replacing? I think we all, there's so much technology, right, coming in and out of our ears. We, 
just help me. Yeah, where, where do we fit? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. It, you know, within a call center, there's some core technologies that you have to have to run a call center. One of those core technologies, you really think about a call center as a very simple environment. You make calls. It's all you do. You right. actually make half of a phone call. And right. so you have to have all the technology to make that call. And really to run a call center, going back a few years to my days in Cape Town, to run a call center, is, it's pretty simple. Number one, people got to be there. Yeah. Like legitimately people have to be there, wherever there is, it might be in your building. It might be right now. Like you and I are talking from locations that are perhaps remote from the office, or maybe we're in the office, right? But you got to be there. You got to be on this screen. Second thing is something's got to come across that screen. You got to have some way to know what you're doing for a living. You can't just like, oh, here's a book, go tell them something, right? It's got to be, you got to know. So those are two pretty big technologies. One is a workforce manager. Are you walking in and do I have you where you need to be? And the second one is your CRM. What is the way I'm passing data? The third one is your telephony. Somehow you've got to get an interaction there. Is it voice? Is it chat? Is it both? Is it email? Whatever it is, but you've got to get work to that person. If they have a customer to the human being that works for the company. Beyond that, you're pretty much done. There you go. That's called, those are core. You really have those. And you can make arguments with other things that are core. And the people who sell it, they'll talk to you about SIP rec and all these really cool terms. But really, it comes down to it. You got to be there. Got to have something on your screen. And finally, you got to talk to someone. And that's how yeah. you make a call center work. And so our technology sort of sits outside of that. It's not necessarily core to the business. But the interesting thing about call centers is the product is a call. That's what you create. Yeah. But the ability to inspect that product is exceptionally hard. So suppose you and I made cell phones and there was an assembly line of cell phones going by. We probably want to know that they work when you send them out the door, right? You want to turn them on. Maybe you have like a thing where they're activated and the battery works. Like, okay, this one looks good. I'll send it on. Maybe a machine does all that. It turns it on. You're like, oh, cell phone happy, cell phone happy. And it goes by one of them might be like a battery flies out of it. You're like, well, not that one. We're going to go work on that one in the back. The manufacturing process is pretty much oriented that way. The call centers aren't thought of as manufacturing. 5% of those phones are inspected Yeah, at that. And then they're inspected, but not on if they actually work. There's other features like, are they compliant with whatever? And so our software actually allows organizations to get a full control of what's happening on their calls. From an agent perspective, is the agent doing what I want them to do? That's easy. What in the world is this human being who called me think about me? What do they feel about me? Are they going to buy more of me? Are they going to get rid of me? You can begin to really understand where am I broken? What frustrates these people? And so our software isn't core in the way that you need it to do the work, but it becomes incredibly valuable to the work you actually do. Who do you go help get better? Who's struggling? Which of these people that work for you that you care about should get some focus today? Who's having a bad day? And you don't know that. You just, they, they, the people are having a bad day. If you work in a call center, they go sit in the corner. <laughs> you put yeah. their head down and they work. I'm going to be here all day today. Yeah. Right. And, and so you can go and be like, hey, you're not, you're not on it. What's going on? Oh, man, my dog is sick. Like, oh, well, let's just take a minute. Tell me about your dog. Right. You've got to be that person. And so, you know, having the ability to look into this is just so valuable. And that's why we have so many clients, 500 of them that use this software and growing all the time. Because oh. once you see what's inside your calls, you care. You care a lot. So that's where yeah, we think. I mean, the last time we spoke, and I just loved the intersection between the customer experience on the one end and the employee experience, right? Because as you said, yeah. the, the agents want to work in an easy sort of environment mm-hmm. where technology is just intuitive. You can look at the data, you can make sense of the data. And at the other end, the customers want to deal with companies that understand them in real time. So that's very exciting. It is the holy grail. It really is. You think about a call center agent is typically not the highest paid individual in an organization. I've never come across one where they are. They don't get to make a lot of decisions, but they have a lot of really poor processes pushed on them. And so they use, as you said, we're not going to replace the human. Why can't you replace a human with a robot? Because there's so many broken things inside every company that some human being has to go figure out how to put them all together and make it work, right? Anyone who works for any company knows the dirty laundry. It's there because it was designed by humans. And we always make quick decisions, patches. We put some bubble gum on something and hold it together for a little while. It's a workaround. And so you're absolutely right. An agent has to go in and fight through the workarounds. They have broken processes. Attorneys have written things they have to read. Those are hard. Like read like an attorney, that'll be good. But sound natural, right? Good good times. You think about what an agent's life is and you're absolutely right. The smoother 
you can make their job, the more you can allow them to just talk to someone like we're doing right now. You and I don't have to go to a CRM and input data as we're talking. I don't have to go look up knowledge management systems to try. I have to go to system one to find this and then system two for that. And then I got to end the information over here. Marketing wants to know. We aren't doing that right now. We're having a wonderful conversation. This is what you want for an organization. But to get there, you have to know what's broken and you have to give the agent to your point. The ability when you're real time and I'm flashing things on your screen that you need to know, it's really nice. You yeah. don't have to look it up anymore. I could just put yeah. it in front. Oh, the customer said they have a cell phone issue. Here you go. And there's how we get started. I've flashed it in there. And so the agent can actually just talk. All right. I've got the form up in front of me now. Let's go ahead and get that taken care of. I love it. And I read up a bit on it. You know, I almost wanted to put you to the test today and just speak closer and see if this technology can interpret that. I don't, we don't have that language. <laughs> I, I'm not sure there's a recognizer. Maybe if you recognize no. that, do it. But no, the South African languages are really interesting. There's just so many. Plus, it's particularly daunting, but there's no reason why any noise can be interpreted by an ASR, a Mandarin. You know, it's just that Plosa isn't spoken so broadly that it's been attacked. And we have a large partnership with Microsoft. One of the reasons we entered that partnership was they have such a vast array of languages. They're such a big company. So they do a lot of our transcription for us. I actually haven't looked to see which of the South African languages they have. And so there's a big four or five that you really want to get in there. And then there's others, but it's a really good call out. And, and what about the language where you switch in between? So now you're moving yeah. between English and in South Africa, you can move between three languages easily in one call. Yeah, right? yeah. You, you, you can could, speak English, yeah. you, can, you can speak Zulu. And you could throw no, a little, no, little like Leka in there for no reason, right? And so you've got this kind of blend of languages and the technology now is advanced to a point where it can actually language detect and begin to understand what's happening in the interactions. But it's a good call That's out. Fine. I mean, languages are big. They're big. We'll let you off the hook today. You talked about 500 odd customers, which is really very impressive. In the different industries now, I just want to bring it back again, just in terms of in a bank or a telco or a business process business, typically who should be thinking about this technology? Yeah, the personas. That's a really, that's an amazing question. The interesting thing is the people who think about it the most are those call center folks, because they've got quality assurance people and they've got the agents. And so they want to deal with it. But lately, lately being in the last two years or so, we've seen a large increase in some other really interesting personas that get very interested in this technology. I'll tell you about a call I had recently. It was a call with a very large customer of ours, and there were no call center people on the call. It was their data science team who's building their models. So they're building predictive models for marketing to see how they should market to their customers in a way that they get more sales. So they build those models. Who should I offer X to and who should I offer Y to? And they found out that this technology existed in their call center and they wanted to say, what can I get out of this? Like, how can I build features for models? So my team came in, we talked to them. We had the head of telephony on there, which is an interesting person to have there. And the head of telephony was like, I need to know more concisely how I deploy my technology. And I know that if I look at all the interactions and what's happening in their link and what's going on in them, I can actually begin to figure out how to redeploy where these calls go. And we had the head of chat, artificial intelligence, AI, chatbots. And they said, I want to understand what's going on in these phone calls so that I can take it and turn it into intent in my system. And those intents that I can use so my chatbots get smarter. I'm like, okay, all three of you, yes. And then there was a marketer there. The head of marketing was sitting in this call. And they're like, I just want to know what they're saying about me. Please, can you just tell me what they're saying about me? All four of those are very different use cases. Each one looks at the same exact piece of data in a very different way. Is there data in here I can use to enrich a model that I can sell something? That's a, it's a definitely an answer in, there, in that data. Telephony, what is going on in these interactions that's making them this way so that I can sure I can handle all of them and put them through my telephone systems? Intense, can I extract anything? Can I make my bots smarter? It's nothing to do with the phone call. I just want smarter bots. And the marketer's like, what do they, do they love me or hate me? Please tell me that. And so the answer is beyond the call center, we have quite a few constituents now that are very interested in what their customers are saying. And that's good. It's just really good to think they want to know what their customers are saying and they want to use it in very different ways. And luckily, our intelligence can be bent to each of those very easily and answer those questions. You know, Rick, I mean, I talk to a lot of customers. There'll be people that say, ah, AI, it's a nice to have or, ah, you know, it doesn't really affect me. I, you know, I, I shouldn't really, I mean, I shouldn't really worry about it. It's a thing of the future. Is that a fair statement or, you know? If they, yeah, they can be in the past. Anyone can, sure. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, they, they, there was this rather successful South African gent that might disagree with them. You know, Elon Musk did start a company that's kind of fully bedded in technology and AI and turned it into the biggest company in the world. So 
You know, I would disagree only because there has always been things. I mean, you, why don't we just go back and use axes in the Stone Age? Uh, you yeah. know, those machines that cut down those trees for us, those things were just, you know, it's just that this is the, the argument that's always happened. There's early adopters and there's late adopters. In this particular world, artificial intelligence is not scary. All it does is take away the banal, annoying tasks and make them smarter. Does it get it right all the time? No, it absolutely does not. It just can't. There's no way. And especially when you get into complex stuff, do humans get it right all the time? Absolutely not. They can't. There's no way. It's too complex, right? So people make mistakes. You can fire them. AIs make mistakes. You can retrain them. And you can retrain people as opposed to firing them too, right? So that's the nature of what this is. If you just think of it as a different way to get to a solution, it's not scary at all. If you think about it in that science fiction it can be really scary. And there are some emblazingly cool technologies out there. There's a couple of new algorithms that have just hit the market recently that are dazzling. There's one called Dolly 2. And if you have a chance, Google it and watch the video. It's unbelievable. What do it's D-A-L-L-E 2. It's okay. by OpenAI. It is unbelievable what this thing can do. And it is a massive model. There's another one called Palm, P-A-L-M, that came out of Google, and that's a language model. It's another incredibly dazzling model. What machines are doing now, and the, so the answer is yes, get AI, and the reason is you're going to be behind when you get into this world. Machines are now being taught to interpret the world in the way we can understand it. And so these two algorithms are so well-trained that they can present answers back to questions we ask it in a way that we understand, but the machine does not think the same way we do. So we're gonna see some leaps now in our world, my world and others. And yeah. as we leap forward, more people will adopt. And those that choose to just stay with ledger cards and pencils and sharpeners, they're gonna find it's hard to maintain their business against someone who is app friendly as machines doing computations. It's just not, you just can't compete. There's room for artisanal. Everybody likes craft beer. Everybody likes craft spirits, right? I don't want to, I don't want an AI making my beer for me, but there are places where you just can't compete. Yeah, I have to say, I was quite surprised that you already have some customer references in South Africa. Yeah, we do. We do. We've got several very large companies in South Africa. I don't know whose name I can use, so I apologize. Any particular, in in, I mean, any particular industries? Yeah, uh, banking, of course. Banking is always going to be big. You think about where the seats are, right? So in this world, where are the most calls? And if you follow the calls, you'll follow the technology. It usually starts in that place. So banking, telcos, travel, those industries, BPOs, of course, South Africa has quite a few very strong BPOs. We have several of those that people outsource to that have our technology. And then you start running across many, many companies. Insurance, always a good spot. We've got a little bit of insurance there too. And then, of course, we've got a lot of names I'm really proud of in South Africa, having lived there. There's some of them that we've got are our, our, our clients that I was like, well, I, I would love to talk about those. But they're generally the ones that want to be talked about. Yeah. Look, that's fantastic. I think it's very exciting, all these, these technology developments. So if I'm a customer now that's interested in this technology, how do I get hold of it? Rick, do I call you? Like, yeah. Yeah. The best way is, I suppose, callminer.com. There's a whole group of people that would love to sell you stuff. <laughs> We've got fleets of sales teams. You can always talk to me. I don't sell anything. I'm an AI person, so I don't know how to sell, I suppose. I don't know how to train robots to tell you you're doing it well. That's pretty much what I can do. But I think the website's an easy way or rick.brit at callminer.com. I'm here. It's what I do for a living. Please call us or email. And it's really just about a demo. See what this darn thing does. And once you see it, it's it's really logical. It's, it's really logical. It's dazzling, but it's not scary. Right? My AIs are not scary. We keep humans in there. We like, we like humans. I like humans a lot. I'm married to one, so yeah. I, I don't want to replace that one either. So, Rick, this has been such an awesome conversation. I'm really intrigued and it's very exciting. And thank you for the insights. And hopefully we'll speak again soon. Yeah, Medici, thank you for the time. I really appreciate it. I know it's the end of your day over there and it's the beginning of mine. So thanks for taking the time to set this up. Now, fantastic. Thank you very much. Have a good one.